All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Morgan Thompson with the Office of Instructional Technology. Um, we are joined by Michelle Conway, who is going to be covering Lumio today. Um, so if you did not get it yet, I'm going to put the link in the chat for closed captioning and we will get started. Beautiful. Thank you, Morgan. Um, so welcome to today's session for secondary teachers on leveraging your content with Lumio. Um, so we're just going to dive in uh, pretty much immediately right here where you guys are going to join in as students. So what I need you all to do in a separate tab on your browser of choice, a lot of us use Google Chrome, uh, browser, whatever you may use, um, just go to hellosmart.com. Make sure you say join as a guest, and then you're going to input my class code 246157. I'm also going to drop a link in the chat as well, so your students can get in live either way. Um, I'm going to take this little link here, and I'm going to pop it in the chat. So either way, we'll get you to the spot um, where I need you to get to. You just got to make sure that you say join as a guest since we do have teacher accounts. As a teacher, I'll start seeing my students populate in here. So I know I already have one student in here with me. So either way is how you are going to get your students in. Same routine, they can go to hellosmart.com, put in your class code. You also see here, um, there is a QR code that the students could use to join. But if you are working in a virtual format, just like we are today, you could always just drop this link in the chat as well. <clears throat> so beautiful. Looks like I got 13 students. Beautiful. So it looks like I should be looking at about 17 students if I remove myself and Morgan from this list. And if you're having any trouble, feel free to put it in the chat. But you're going to experience Lumio in this first half of today's session as a student, and then we'll get in and talk about building as a teacher and all that good stuff. All right, I am going to make sure I keep moving, but um, I, because I know these sessions go really fast, um, but if there's anyone who's having any issues, feel free to put some um, comments in the chat. I want to tell it took me to the last Lumia for the welcome session. Is there a way? Yep, so Jillian, all you need to do is go to your three lines, and in your three lines, you should be able to say leave class. Same thing with you, Christina. And that will make sure that you get out of that previous class and into mine. Perfect. And I'm just going to post the chat one more or post the link one more time in the chat uh, for Christina and Jillian, just in case you guys need it. <clears throat> Alrighty, so let's dive in. So before we go any further, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. So my name is Michelle Conway Gray. That's the first time I'm ever saying that. I got married on Friday, so it's like a new uh, new name for me after 32 years. So crazy. Um, but I'm a professional development specialist. Thank you, everyone. Um, professional development specialist uh, with SMART. Um, I have been in education for almost a decade now. I was a middle school math teacher, so I feel kind of right at home with this crew of secondary teachers. Um, and I taught in Charleston, South Carolina. After a few years, I shifted back home where I'm from outside of Philadelphia, and I was an instructional technology coach for the school district of Philadelphia for the last five years. I just took this job on with SMART um, over the summertime, so it was a nice transition since in Philadelphia we worked heavily with Lumio and uh, our SMART board implementation and all that good stuff. If there's any questions after today's session, so... Um, Maybe you're just like, hey, I just would love a stepper or more content ideas for Lumio. Feel free to reach out to that email, michelleconway at smarttech.com. 
and ask any questions that you have after today's session. So feel free to write that contact down. We also have an agenda for today's session. So I'm just gonna pop this in the chat as well. Um, this, let me make sure I change this here. Um, this agenda has all of the content that I'm reviewing today. And also you'll see it has hyperlinks. They'll bring you to little YouTube clips that show you um, how to do that specific skill. I have some resources, but then there is my email again um, for anyone that may need it. So I'm gonna pop this in the chat. All righty. So today's learning goals is to utilize Lumio to leverage ready-made content and share interactive learning with your students. So when we were designing this session, the goal really was to make sure that it's low prep, no prep, or we're just using things that we've already created and how I can leverage that to make it a little bit more interactive for my students. So what you're gonna do first is see it from the student perspective, like I said before, and then with the time remaining, we're just going to build a little bit, um, maybe a, an activity or two um, from the teacher perspective. And hopefully that takeaway is that you have something ready to go um, for your next time with students. All right, so this first thing we're activity we're going to do is called an, um, a response. Um, it's just a little uh, icebreaker for all of you. This is our probably our most formal assessment tool that we have in Lumio, but it's very much like a surveying tool, a polling tool, but also you could ask your students questions and you can export the data in a Google Excel sheet. So I'm just as a teacher going to say start for class and on your end as a student, you should be able to start with responding to those three questions. And as a teacher, I'll start to see all of your responses as they go in, or at least the percentage of the question or questions answered. So some of the questions I'm able to um, create like a, a um, I think they're called word clouds. Um, so I can see like who I have in today's session. So it looks like I have some math teachers, some library media specialist, English librarians. Wow, I love my librarians. My media specialists are representing here today. Middle school math, amazing middle school social studies, some English. <clears throat> this is a nice little, you know, cue or little data point that I can use for my students to make sure that they are completing. So if I gave them 10 minutes to finish the quiz and only 70% uh, questions were answered. Maybe I encourage them to make sure you're finishing the questions, make sure you're hitting submit. <clears throat> but when I export that data, I will be able to see what the specific questions were. So this is a nice way that maybe you want to include some um, survey or form, like say a Google form, but you just don't want your students to go back and forth between a Lumio lesson to Google forms. This is a nice way that you could do a similar thing within the same platform. What is your comfort level with Lumio? So a lot of you said that you are new. Amazing. Um, and then those that are glowing, uh, starting to grow. So this is a nice either refresh session for those that maybe may are a little bit more familiar with um, Lumio. And this is an awesome beginner session as well. In one word, what is your goal for today's session? So a lot of you, big big one is learn. Um, learn the basics, learn how to present, engagement, <clears throat> perfect. Easy tips for teachers, right. Learn how to use Lumio. So throughout, I'll make sure that I point out some of the tools and features that, you know, I, from my experience, uh, some of the tools that 
teachers love. Of course, it's a 55 minute session, so we're not going to be able to go through everything today, but I'm going to try and highlight as much as I could can. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, dive in on your own time. I'm always like someone that needs to kind of get my own hands dirty and get in there and explore um, so I can get more comfortable with it. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for answering those questions. So this first activity is a notice and wonder, but what I want us to kind of talk through first before I have you complete it. So make sure you don't hit anything on your end. Um, so this was an actual um, Google slide that I created. And you know, sometimes with Google slides, um, I love Google Slides, so no knock on Google Slides at all. I actually use it a lot when I was teaching as well as in my previous job. But with Google Slides, I always found it was like really difficult to just have kids interact with it. I would either, either have to make a copy for each student or just really go over expectations um, to make it engaging teach them how to make a text box, do all those things. Whereas here I can just bring it right into Lumio. Um, this specific slide, I didn't have to bring in the entire slide deck. I just wanted this slide um, and then add it with uh, and combine it with all these other resources. So I could combine it with a PDF, which you'll see, a YouTube video, which you'll see. Um, but this original slide was a um, Google slide just to kind of put perspective in this. Um, so what I need you to do on your end as a student, you'll hit start. Each one of you will have your own copy of this slide. I just want you to interact with it briefly, maybe 30 seconds, add some text, maybe add a picture, just interact with it. You don't have to necessarily complete the activity. Um, I just want you to kind of see it from that student perspective, how they can interact. You'll notice once you hit start, you'll have your own copy and you'll see a list of tools off to the side that you can use. So even if I hop in here real quick to Alexis's, we both have the same amount of tools. So you'll have a pen tool, which I'll be honest, the pen tool is pretty tough to use when you're not on a trackpad or an iPad or say the smart board. Um, so I typically kind of in, uh, encourage my students to either use that A tool, which is your text tool, once you hit that A feature, nothing will happen. You just have to pop over here and just put um, a text box in that space. Then you have a picture icon where you can add shapes and images and sometimes even links, but just interact with it a little bit and see what you see. I notice uh, Mr. Murrow, I think that's how I'm saying it. Notice the done button, which is brilliant. So I can hop into his and see how he did. Chicago's looking good. Oh, I didn't even know that was Chicago, which is incredible. I actually went there for my bachelorette in August and fell in love with Chicago. Would love to go back to Chicago. Um, awesome. So a few of you have noticed the done button. So let's take a look um, back over to that teacher perspective. So. What I did was convert this to what is called an individual handout. So each one of my students gets their own copy of that slide. As the teacher, I can kind of hop in and out of each other, um, each one of these contributions. So I can hop into Christina's, see how she did. I also could leave feedback for Christina. No one else would see it other than Christina. I can also, also scroll through, see how each one of my students did which is really nice at the bottom right hand side is this teacher handout. So I always have a clean copy of the activity. So if I wanna go back and review expectations or review the assignment, I have a clean copy of it at all times. And then as I said before, you guys all noticed that done button. Um, this is a nice feature. Like, so Mrs. Blum could technically kind of go back and hit edit so she in that done button would actually disappear and that green check but i just always want to say um another way a little tip or trick i guess you if you will um so i worked with a teacher who necessar didn't necessarily use that done button um to tell like to have her students tell them tell her when they're finished um she had them use the done button if they were comfortable sharing their work. So I thought it was an interesting way of using that done button. So if 
they do their work, maybe it's a more sensitive topic and Virginia is like, hey, I don't want to share, she wouldn't hit that done button. So just a little tip or trick to use that done button, but that is how an individual handout would work. So it's, you can bring in a slide, you can bring a PDF, you can bring in just a normal Lumio slide, a graphic organizer within Lumio, and create it quickly into an individual handout. So for me, and you'll see this next slide, which is a PDF, I do believe, um, I didn't have all the time in the world to go make a bunch of um, copies at the printer during my prep time. For me, this is a, such an easier process to just quickly bring in a Lumio and convert it into an individual handout, and then my students can interact with it. So just a little, um, you know, uh, ideas around individual handouts and using ready-made content. So this next activity, um, like I said, was a PDF. So similar to uh, the previous slide, I brought it in from my desktop, my Google Drive. Um, again, like as I was just saying, we don't always have the time in the world to one convert um, convert it to an editable PDF trying to figure out how what platform to use that for. Um, I know a lot of people either use like Cami or something like that. Whereas I could just pop it into Lumio real quick and just quickly convert it into an individual handout. So similar process, if you guys all um, hit start, if we hop into this PDF, I could add as many pages of the PDF as I wanted. I just wanted to kind of highlight that you could bring in a PDF. This is a nice way they could use this pen feature, maybe change it to the highlighter. Um, in the pen feature, you'll have a basic pen. You also have this little flat top pen, which is a highlighter. Um, and then they can annotate that um, PDF or that article right from Lumio. So they could add their thoughts. So it could be like, aha, like aha moments. I didn't know that was the idea. Didn't know that. And they could just highlight and make their own little uh, annotations, which is also a really cool way of maybe doing current events, articles, stuff like that. Um, again, I didn't have to go sit at my copier. I didn't have to make a million copies of this PDF. I also maybe just wanted them to review slide or PDF page number two. Um, this could be a worksheet. Um, I was a math teacher, so for me, it was always really difficult to find a way to have my kids virtually interact with math worksheets because if I was typing it out, it just didn't look right. Um, I am still pretty old school when it comes to math. I'm like a pencil and paper girl, but I think this is also a nice way for kids to con uh, complete worksheets as well um, and saves me a lot of time as a teacher. I can just hop back into this Lumio file and check their work here and I don't have to worry about missing papers, people not putting it in the done basket for me to check later. Um, just a really nice way, an easy way for me to um, uh, use a PDF worksheet. And then Jillian, you could add a link. So if I went back to, um, you know, editing this, I could have had this as like a worksheet that I had them to fill out. And maybe I added a link to the NASA website where I want them to hop out and explore an activity on NASA. And I could add that link real quick. Um, let's just pretend here, nasa.gov. As the teacher, I could have like a link ready for them that I want them to pop out and and conduct um, during that same activity. So it would open in a new tab, just like next to it. Great question. The other thing I want to highlight um, real quick before we move on is each one of your students, and you have to make sure we turn it on when we go into uh, the teacher perspective. But there's this little book icon. So right now, this immersive reader only reads text boxes that have been included on the page. So for the previous slide, um, if I hit this teacher handout and hit this um, immersive reader, it will just read whatever text box is on the page. However, um, and once they click on it, it will pop them out again to just a different, uh, not a different tab, but it just opens up a new kind of screen, if you will, on the same tab. And this is a really nice feature for your ELL learners, maybe uh, readers that maybe need to change it to a different language. In the reading preferences, they're able to just convert this over to um, 
their native language. So we have Spanish, so this would change the wording to Spanish. So it just helps them complete the activity. Why I want to highlight this immersive reader, especially for secondary, is that soon down the roadmap, this immersive reader will also be able to read PDF text. So this is going to be a nice feature for students that might need the whole article read to them, um, but just wanted to highlight that immersive reader. So Stacy, there is like an asynchronous student link, which I'll show you when we go to the teacher perspective. So if you want te uh, students to come back to it later, maybe to complete the work or maybe complete another activity for homework within that lesson, um, there is a um, student share link. So yep, so that immersive reader would convert, uh, change that uh, text to um, different languages. So beautiful. So Christina, right now only teachers can leave um, audio, but soon on the roadmap, students are going to be able to contribute their own audio as well. So students do have an account, so they just need to put your code in um, as you all did earlier. So with my 246. Great questions. I hopefully am answering them as we go. So this next activity is just YouTube. I just wanted to highlight YouTube because in secondary and even elementary, we do, I think there's so much power in YouTube. Um, I know sometimes YouTube gets a little bit of a bad rep, but I think um, it's how our students are learning now. I think videos are really good. But what I like about YouTube within Lumio is that um, it's already vetted and it's already um, filtered. So there's no ads that's gonna play before my video. There's not gonna be suggested videos that keep playing or recommended videos off the side that are pretty inappropriate to my content. Um, so this is a nice little feature if you wanna input it into Lumio instead of maybe having it on a separate slot or tab to play the YouTube video. It's nice to just have it embedded within the lesson. I could also always play it from my, um, my. imagine this is on my smart board, I could play it from my smart board, or if the students have headphones, they can listen to their own YouTube videos as well, because they will have that ability to hit play, as you can see on the student perspective. And then finally, this is again just another slide, but I wanted to show you what a group setup would look like. So not only individual, um, so you are able to also put students in small groups on each Lumio slide. So um, if I want them working in groups of two or three, all I need to do is just hit this setup feature. It's gonna ask me how many teams I would like. So I have about 16 folks in here today. So I'm just gonna do groups of four. And you can see that it's mo uh, moving into uh, the different groups. Yep, so Katie, yes. Yeah, so you'll see them, um, videos would be accessible on the student perspective as well. All right, so what's nice about right now is I could say, okay, you know what, this group I might need to split up a little bit, so I'm going to move these around. I'm also going to move these two around. And then all I need to do is then hit Start Workspace. And then each of you are able to contribute to your team's workspace. So again, I just want you to practice adding text, maybe adding a picture or two. <clears throat> Also take note of the audio at the top right hand side. As a teacher, you can leave five minutes of audio per slide. So if you need to add directions or tips or tricks to the activity your students, maybe expectations you expect from the students, um, you can add audio yourself, as I mentioned before, soon, hopefully, rather than later. Um, students will also be able to contribute audio to a slide. So I hop into Team 1's workspace. Let me hop into Team 2, beautiful. Team 3. So as the teacher, I can actually go in here and click on each contribution and click the down arrow. So one more time for those that might be looking at their screen, if you come back to that teacher screen, I can click on each contribution 
and see who added it. So I can see Christina added this. I can see that the teacher added this, but also edited it by Deanna. Same thing up here. I can see Deanna added that. Beautiful. Hop over here. I can see Virginia's having a lot of fun with the star colors. Love that. Um, Mrs. Blum. So you can see I can see who added what. However, let's talk about it because we're in secondary. Um, students, you know, I was middle school, so I totally understand. Sometimes they they lack some maturity. So if they are contributing things that are inappropriate, again, you can find out who contributed. Um, if they went in and changed this writing, so needed to survive, maybe they say needed to live or whatever, um, I will see that it was added by Miss Welsh, but then edited by the other student. So just a little FYI. Students can delete each other's work. So you would just need, I love it, Virginia. You did a very nice job of modeling. Um, students can delete each other's work. So let's pull that carton back. You will need to kind of review expectations with them and all that good stuff. Um, but I really do like the group workspace once they kind of get in the groove of how to do it. Any questions so far other than the ones that were posted in the chat? Um, you know, revolving around just importing resources and then just converting them in just a few. We'll show, I'll show you how you can actually do them on the teacher perspective. Exactly. So what I, um, so as the teacher, uh, Kim, you just need to um, convert it on the back end to a group workspace and then you hit set up. So let me just show you kind of that on the fly because I can. So let's just add a blank page here. I can come up to my classroom management tab, it's called. And it's going to ask you, well, what do you want to do with this page? Do you want to make it an individual handout? Do you want to make it a group workspace? Whole class whiteboard is the only one we didn't really necessarily experience, but it's just all of you on the same page. Um, but here is that group workspace. So I can just make this a group workspace. Then it's going to ask me how I want to set it up. And there they all go. So that's how you can set up a group workspace on the fly. I also can do it in the back end um, and convert it beforehand, but I just want to make sure I showed you that you can do these things on the fly as well. One more thing I wanted to talk about before we kind of shift gears back into teacher perspective as in any case, you can actually have the pacing change. So if you have, um, Yep, it's pretty easy if you just drag and drop their names for sure. Um, Jillian, yes, so students do have student accounts. Um, alrighty, so say I'm a math teacher. I want them to look through my model examples and then maybe I have a worksheet for them to do. I don't necessarily want them in teacher pacing because you could see that it sticks you in the slide I moved to. But if I wanted to kind of release them to kind of go through the slides themselves, go back to my model problems, conduct the worksheet, go back and forth, I just need to swipe this over to student perspective or student pacing, and then they're able to go through the slides on their own. Just wanted to highlight that one last like kind of classroom management before we kind of switch gears here. Oh, and one more thing, you can build games. We do have a game session a little later on, um, but I do wanna just highlight this game, um, Super Sort, because if you're familiar with some of these games um, in Lumio, and if you've been familiar with, you know, Notebook or any of those in the past, you know the games are nothing new, but you never knew if students completed them or not. So there's three games now, and I'm going to put them in the chat real fast. There's Super Sort, Match Em Up, which is like a matching game, and Rank Order. These three games now actually give teacher data, which is really nice. So for Super Sort, it's just a category game. So they just need to move the answers into the right categories. So what I want you to do is real quick, I just want you to quickly play, and then we're switching gears to building. 
in the games, you'll see that you can contribute um, images or words. The images, you can see that there's a blue box in the corner, so it makes it a little larger for your students to see them if it's a really tiny picture. A colleague of mine also recommends maybe if you're a chemistry teacher or um, a math teacher, you know, sometimes when we type out those things, they just don't look right. So they sometimes will screenshot the problem and then that way the students can kind of make it a little bigger as the image because these you can't make bigger. And then they become, the text becomes smaller as you add more text to it. So sometimes screenshotting the words. Um, so if you have a passage to a story or something and then inputting it as an image, sometimes that's a better option. So let's take 10 more seconds just to quickly complete that game on the student end. I love the games. I don't, I just don't like them. I love them. I, um, just from my teaching, I used them when I was in the classroom and I also throughout, um, throughout my instructional coaching, the games were always a big win with my teachers because not only are they super easy to make, um, the, the kids just love them. They just really, they're game-based learning. Game-based learning is super fun. Um, so they just really, really buy into it. So as a teacher, I can come over. So if you take a look at my teacher perspective here, um, I have the option to open up the dashboard or view your progress. So it will show you a bunch of different data points. Um, let me just make sure I answer this question. I don't so, Kim, you'll have to input the the answers, if you will, um, but there's all different themes, and I just chose the space theme because I thought it kind of was re related to, you know, Earth. Um, so, but you can change the theme based off of uh, what your content is. So, Superstore only has two categories right now, so it is a two-category type game. Um, so. Let's kind of look at this one more time. So class overview, I can see that three of my students that were logged in didn't start. One was in progress before maybe I changed um, slide or whatever, or they just haven't hit, they haven't finished it. Um, and then 11 of you completed it. Now it will kind of block for a lack of a better word, the results, because they might assume you might have this window up on the smart board or uh, displaying it for the students. So all I need to do is swipe on show results and then I get some different data points. So I can see my class average score. I can see the class average for um, the time. What I really might like is this little data point off to the right hand side. I can see the five most frequently incorrect answers. So those are the ones I know for a fact I need to come back to. Um, I also can swipe over to see which ones you guys really nailed. Um, but then I also can see individual student progress. So again, it's going to block it until I say show results. And then I can see each one of you. So um, if I hop in here, I can see how he did. He got a 12 out of 12. Um, so what this means, this first data point is a little misleading. This means that he eventually did 12, whereas this is always going to be scored off your first attempt. So um, the first attempt is going to always be the one that you get all the data point from. So he could have went back and played four more times. It's just going to show me that um, this is what he uh, got on the first attempt. I can see how he did based off each question. What I really like is this time it took him to do this activity. So say, I mean, he he crushed it, but say he did like a one out of 12 and it took him 10 seconds to complete. I may think to myself, eh, did he really try? So I might have to, re, you know, connect with him and be like, did you take your time? Let's try this again. Um, but I really like this because before the games, I have always been fantastic. I just never knew how the kids did after they played. So three of the games, which I did put in the chat, so super sort, match them up, 
and rank order you can get data from now. Okay, awesome. And you don't always have to even have them log in to do these games. So you could have this game up on the board. Um, there's 12 different games you can choose from and you can have them come up to your smart board. Get those kids out of their seats coming up to your smart board. They could also play the game just as a class. So don't feel like you need to have them logged into their devices to play these games. But of course, if you want this to be um, assessed in some way, of course, have them log into their Chromebooks and then they'll be able to play on their own. Alrighty. Any questions? So let's switch gears here. So, you know, of course, let's quickly do this as exit ticket, but this is called a shout it out. Um, shout it out is a parking lot activity. A lot of us have done these in the past, whether it's just walking out with a part, uh, post-it note, add your contribution. It's very similar to that. So reflecting before we get into this teacher perspective, um, maybe you're very new to Lumio, or maybe you've heard colleagues use it. How has your thinking changed a little bit? Um, you used to think this about, you know, game-based learning, and now I think this, or just whatever, whatever thoughts you have. So on your end as a student, you have a little text box, and you should have two categories. So I used to think this about Lumio, now I think this, or I used to think this, Lumio is very elementary, I love that. It takes too long to set up items. Perfect. It was complicated. All good answers. Now I think this. Now I think maybe I can set this up super quickly. Exact. I love that one, the Lumio only beneficial during virtual instruction because I think um, it was a big push during virtual. So a lot of us have this like, PTSD of any tool we use during that virtual and just like turn it off. I need to turn it off. But Lumio is super powerful, especially because it's um, very much connected with your smart board. It's connected with um, outside apps. So for my secondary folks, there's it's um, connected with FET simulations, Desmos, um, YouTube, obviously, uh, a lot of uh, partnerships have happened, which you'll see in the Lumio library, Footsteps of History. Um, there's been some good stuff with Epic Reading, Read Work. So I think um, getting opportunities like this, I think this is a fantastic e-coaching day, by the way. Um, getting opp opportunity, opportunities to kind of see it outside of what you already knew um, may give you a little bit more confidence to maybe try out something like Lumio. Um, but yeah, if I take some time, I can use it as a lesson launch pad. Perfect. Yeah, you don't even have, so you, I showed you from start to finish how you could conduct a lesson, have some slides, have some, a PDF out of YouTube. You could just use it for the PDF portion. Maybe everything else is mapped out, whether it's with your, with the resources provided by the instructional teams. Maybe you just wanted to use it for the PDF portion of it. So you don't even need to use it for the entire lesson. Yeah, I think it really helps if you are have a goal for like collaborating and form. Um, I want more collaboration in my class, more student voice in my class. I think these tools give a nice option for you. Um, whether it's shout it out, this this is a perfect. So if you're like, hey, whole class whiteboard or group workspace is a hard place to start for me. Shout it out is always an easy place place to start. This is super easy to set up. Um, um, it's pretty anonymous. I can go and click through um, each one of your contributions. You see there's no name attached to it. Um, I could say display names and then your names would display. Um, but I'm going to keep it anonymous for now. Um, but your students, uh, it's just a really easy uh, way to kind of elevate student voice. All right. Now I think it's time that we switch gears. So um, let's get out of that student perspective. So what you'll need to do is go through to the three lines. So I think a few of you already practiced this a little earlier and say, leave class. And then what I need you to do from there is just to open up a new tab. <clears throat> So 
So I'm actually going to model this with you all. So I'm going to hop out of mine for a minute. And I'm going to open up Google Drive. And yep, Meg and I will show you how to do uh, that import for you. And I think, Miss Metheny, I just showed you how uh, they post. You, I, I made it anonymous and then swiped it on to show um, who contributed what. Alrighty, from here, you just have to hit new, the big new button. S scroll down to more. These are typically outside of the main Google Apps, and then Lumio should be somewhere on your list. So one more time. New, more, Lumio. And then it will pop you out to a new window. See, I was signed in, so it's going to pop me immediately to my home page. Um, but you might have to say sign in with Google or I am a teacher, sign in with Google, kind of follow the breadcrumbs, and then eventually you'll get to your home page. You know you're on your home page where you see your name. You also see your class ID. Maybe if you have some files, if you're completely new, you won't really have anything in your Lumio library. But when you are in, on your homepage, if you could just put homepage in the chat, just so I kind of know we're all on the same page, or put your class ID, either one. Perfect, homepage, homepage, homepage. So Kim, it shouldn't. So if you look on that same page at a very small writing on the bottom, it says, are you a teacher? It's like, it may be like purple or yellow, purple writing or maybe blue writing. Click on that and then it will bring you to the right spot. It kind of just thought you were a, a student again, which is totally fine. Beautiful. Alrighty, so um, just highlighting a few things just because we are we only have like 12 minutes, I do believe, Morgan. Let me know if I'm off on that. I think we end at 1020. Um, yep. We also have um, a survey too. So perfect. So we have like 10 minutes. Okay, beautiful. So what we have here is your Lumio library. Um, so this is your personal library. If you go into the middle here where it says Lumio library, this is where you could pull ready-made resources. So you don't always have to reinvent the wheel whether it's like importing Google Slides or PDFs. There are also a million things here available. Um, but let's pop back over to my library. I want to show you how you could import a few things. So first things first, um, here is my name. Now, if your name says like your full name, like mine does, Michelle Conway, and that's exactly what my students will see. So if you're like, hey, I don't want that, you just need to go over here to the right and say edit class and just say rename your class. Very simple way to fix that to Miss Conway, Mrs. Conway, whatever you may choose. But let's go to new right here, the big new sign. <clears throat> when you get this new option, it's asking you, well, how do you want to start? Do I want to import something? So hint, hint, that would be how I import my Google slide, my PDF, or what have you. Do I want to start with a YouTube? Do I want to start with a Desmos activity, FET activity? Um, there's that shout it out. Here are the games. So that there's that response we tried out. 
So you have like a million different options of how to start. The nicest thing that Lumio did over the, over the last years, add these little graduation caps. So if you're like, hey, I, Michelle went over this, but you know, it is a 55 minute session. We don't have all the time in the world to do all the activities. You can always go back in here and look to see how it works. So it is a nice um, little grad, um, you know, stepper, if you will, or a little resource that you may need to just see how it works. Um, what is it, what have you. But what I wanna show is importing because I think that's a big reason why you're all here today. So import a resource. So if I click on import resource, I have a couple options. So you do, you can absolutely um, bring in PowerPoint. So if you're someone like who's like, hey, I love Google Slides, but I've been teaching for a while and I have some really incredible PowerPoints I still use, you can always use PowerPoint. What's nice about PowerPoint versus Google Slides. When I bring in a Google Slide, it's static. The images are, it's almost an image. I can't move the text around. I can't, I would have to go back to Google and fix the slide and then bring it back in. Whereas now PowerPoint is editable when I bring it in, which is a nice little feature. But unfortunately, I'm very much a Google user. I don't have a lot of Microsoft products um, on my my new desktop, if you will. Um, but you also can bring in from your computer. So those folks that have PDF saved, or if you're an old school notebook user and they're saved to your actual computer, um, you can always bring in from there. Um, I know, I mean, Megan, I don't really, I can't even hate on PowerPoint if I'm being completely honest, because as soon as I kind of started teaching um, 10 years ago, I kind of hopped right into Google uh, with the schools I worked in. So um, I can't even hate on PowerPoint because I don't know it not, uh, enough. Um, Anyway, but you also can do Google Drive. So if we take a look at our Google Drives, you may have, I'm the most organized ever in this new um, Google Drive that I have, but if you saw my last one, it was like a million untitled slides, a million just homeless files with no folders. But I made sure I was pretty organized today, so I was ready to go. So I have this folder where in Arendelle that I know for a fact I have a Google Slide in. So if, I'm just gonna hop in here. Of course, you guys can find your resource you want to practice with. Um, but I'm going to go into this leverage your content session. But here's that Google slide. So if I open up this slide and hit select, it's now importing that slide. <clears throat> now, imagine that this slide deck had 20 different slides in it. I can select pick and choose which slides I want to bring in. So luckily for me, there's only one slide in the slide deck. So I just need to hit add. And now it's starting my lesson. Similar concept. If now after I do that slide, and I want to maybe add a PDF because I want maybe want them to do a bell ringer on this slide, and then I want them to read the article about um, renewable energy. I can go back down to this blue plus sign now at the bottom left hand side. <clears throat> same window is going to pop up. That's what I like about Lumio. Same thing. It's always going to be kind of the same format, so I don't have to like try and figure out a million different tools. It's very simple. Um, again, I can just go right into import resource, go back into my Google Drive, go back in that folder where I know there's a PDF waiting for me. There she is. I think this is actually a good example. I think this has four pages to it or maybe multiple. There we go. Beautiful. So say I don't need this last slide. This slide really kind of cut off and it's really just like, you know, that end of a PDF article, like the resources and all that stuff. Maybe I just need one, two, and three. I can uncheck that four and add, and there she goes. I'm now importing, combining resources. So this Google slide was from Google. I actually pulled this um, article from National Geographic. So it's I'm combining ready-made resources and leveraging it now because now I want to make it engaging for my students. So I am now going to pause for just a second to make sure everyone 
understood that process of how I import from outside of Lumio. You just look for the import button, the little uh, either new or that blue button at the bottom corner, and hit import. All right, so it looks like we're pretty good there, but now I have to make sure I make the magic happen. So if I were to turn this around with my students right now, it's even telling me here at the bottom, this page is view only. My students aren't gonna be able to do anything with it. You saw I did it on the fly, but you know, sometimes you wanna be prepared. So up at the top right corner, you have this magic wand. This is where you make the magic happen, is my little corny saying of the day. So if I go to the magic wand, here's my options. Individual handout, group workspace, or whole class. I want to make this individual. There she is. Now she's ready to go for my students as an individual handout. Just say notice and wonder, just so I remember what it is. And then again, maybe I want this to be individual. Again, just need to convert it. This is page one. Convert it again. Page two. Maybe I want to make this third page a group workspace. I don't know why I would do that, but let's just go with it for now. And now I can make this a group workspace, and now this is ready to go for me to hit set up on when the, when the students actually log in. Because you only can set them up before the, when the students are logged in because it's going to base it off of how many number of students are with you live. Okay, I know that was really quick. However, we have this recording that we can go back to. Let's just wrap up real quick before we hand out that survey. Up at the top here, make sure you title. It's telling you automatically saving in the back end in your Google Drive. You just have to look for that Lumio folder in your drive so mine is right here it always saves automatically in your lumio folder from there you can move it around in your drive if i hit finish editing there is that lesson i can either start it just like i am was before i can go back and edit it if i hit start i can go like if i go back into this leverage one and i hit start i can see how you guys did i can go back and check your work later by hitting start from here in these three dots is some other options. So I can hit this share link option. And I, one of you asked about an asynchronous link if the stu so students can go back without me and finish the work. You just have to make sure you share this out on your Google Classroom or wherever you share out work, this student link. This top link is if me and Mr. Murrow were, were co-teachers. I'm like, hey, just made a great game. Let me share it with you. I can share this link with him. And now he has his own copy of that game. And then finally, in this three dots, you also have make a copy. We're all secondary. We all teach multiple classes. I always have like a master copy that the kids don't interact with so I can use it over and over again. I probably should have done that today with leverage your content. I should have probably made a copy of this and then had you all interact with it. We all have 100 plus students in secondary. So sometimes we just want to make sure we make a copy for each of those periods that we teach. All righty, so I think, Morgan, you can probably pop that survey in the chat. As always, we're always looking for key takeaways, so feel free to put that in the chat as well. Um, if there's something that you kind of were an aha moment for you today. We're always looking to grow our ambassador community. This link is on that agenda. I'll drop that agenda one more time in the chat. Um, this is a great way to kind of grow um, within Lumio. You also, if you're like someone who's like, hey, I really love Lumio, I'm using it pretty well. Um, we're always looking for certified trainers to do um, sessions just like I am today. Uh, I can't be everywhere. I, I'm in charge of the entire East Coast, can't be everywhere. So sometimes it's nice to have certified trainers in the area who can conduct trainings and get paid for them. We also have uh, these academies now, so you can actually learn at your own pace. So if you're someone who's like, hey, Michelle, I, I need more time with this, dive into these Lumio's academies. You can uh, gain badges, PD hours, learn it on your own time. Same thing with the smart board. And just thank you all for uh, joining today's session. I do have, again, let me drop this agenda. And hopefully you have um, new ways that you can use your content that you have 
probably spend a lot of time making, you know, Google Slides, your PDFs. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, um, but Michelle, there was one quick question from Virginia in the chat. Yes, yeah, so how do you save the presentation with the individual student slides and notes? So it saves automatically all that, all of